President of the United States. Most inspirational legislator that we have had for many, many years. Thank you again for coming. It is my honor and my privilege to introduce somebody who's becoming a very good friend of mine because I think I've seen him every night this past week. Chesa Boudin is a public defender running for DA. He is part of a movement across the country for people to ask for real justice. He is the people's choice and he is the only progressive in the race, Chesa Boudin. Thank you. Wow. Uh, it is a real honor to be here. I have to say uh, that is a tough act to follow, Ro. I, uh, I'm not sure um, how that happened in the agenda. I would have liked to have gone before him. <laughs> Let me just see a quick show of hands. Who here voted for Bernie Sanders last time around? Yay! I'm so proud to be part of this group, to have voted for Bernie Sanders, to be ready to do it again this year. Now, I know that every one of us in this room, can you hear me in the back? Yes. Okay. I know that every person in this room who just raised their hand, who voted for Bernie, who's ready to do it again, has a different reason for why he is their candidate. I want to tell you my reason. Because I know that Bernie Sanders is the only presidential candidate who is truly committed to ending mass incarceration. Yeah. Yeah. And those two words, mass incarceration, those are words that we hear every day. What do they mean? Mass incarceration means that the United States is a country that incarcerates the most people of any country in the world. It means we incarcerate 25% of the world's prison population. Shame. It means that in a place Shameful. like San Francisco, Shameful. where the population Shame. is 4% African American, Whoa. more than 50% of the jail is African American. Mass incarceration also means something very personal to me. Mass incarceration means that in this country, more than 50% of the population has an immediate family member that is either incarcerated today or was previously incarcerated. I'm one of the majority. When I was in diapers, my parents left me at the babysitter and they never came home. My mother served 22 years in prison. My father may never get out. Now growing up, for me and to this day, mass incarceration means the sound of steel gates closing behind me every time I say goodbye to my father. It means every single phone conversation that I've ever had with him including the one I had this morning, is recorded by the Department of Corrections. It means that the invisible ink that guard stamps on my hand when I go into the prison is my passport back to freedom while he's getting strip searched by those same guards. We can do better. Now, visiting prisons my whole life taught me that our system is broken. It's not just broken for the children, the millions of children like me that grow up visiting their parents in prison. It's also broken for the victims of crime who have so little to show for the billions of dollars we invest in caging mostly black and brown young men. It's broken for the taxpayers that foot the bill. It's broken for the people who spend their lives wasting away in cages. We can do better. Now, I'm running for district attorney because I have a lot of ideas about how we can fix this broken system.
I've been working on criminal justice reform since before those were popular things to talk about, right? You talk about all the so-called progressives in the race, okay. whether it's the local level, whether it's the national level, we know there are not that many true progressives. So I want to tell you briefly about my background so you can see where I come from and where I'm going with your help. I've been speaking out about issues of mass incarceration since I was in high school. I've been working on these issues. It's why I went to law school. It's why I became a lawyer. I've been a public defender here in the San Francisco Hall of Justice. It's the only place I've practiced law since law school. And during that time, I've seen that the promises we're taught in grade school and in law school are false promises. We're told that we live in a country of equal justice, but instead we have money down, where the wealthy buy their way out and the poor languish behind bars no matter how weak the evidence against them is. We're told we have a system that cares about treating people's mental illness and drug addiction, but instead we give them solitary confinement and felony conviction and put them back on the street to see what happens next. We're told we live in a system where we want to have a level playing field and invest in our future and our youth. But in the time we've built a single new university in the state of California, we've built more than 20 prisons. Shame. So we need to break that school to prison pipeline. We need to end money bail. We need to recognize that fixing this broken system starts with understanding the root causes of crime. In San Francisco, 75% of the people booked into county jail suffer from drug addiction, mental illness, or both. We are asking, thank you, I'm sorry, tell me if you need loud in the back. We are asking the criminal justice system to deal with a public health crisis. With Bernie Sanders' help, with all of your help, we're going to have public health care for all. We're going to end mass incarceration. We're going to close jails. We're going to close prisons. We're going to provide investment to communities before crimes are committed. And we're going to give victims a voice through restorative justice programs. As a public defender, I've led the fight against money bail in San Francisco. I work to end cooperation with immigration officials who were literally kidnapping people from their communities and deporting them to countries they had never known. Now in San Francisco, we talk a lot about crime and punishment and there's a lot of moderates in this town who think we need to be tougher on people who commit property crimes. So I want to give you an example of how we're doing things today and how much better we could be doing. People say that the auto burglaries in San Francisco are an epidemic. They say that the 30,000 auto burglaries reported in 2018 mean we're not being tough enough on crime. Well, there was a man, African American, of course, in January of this year, who broke a single car window, took a single backpack, and was sentenced to nine years wow. in state prison. Whoa. And they say we're not tough enough. But you know what didn't happen for the $85,000 a year we as taxpayers are gonna spend to incarcerate that young man? What didn't happen is nobody paid to fix the broken window. What about victims' rights? What about actually healing the harm that crime causes instead of perpetuating a cycle of mass incarceration? We can do better. But if we want fundamental change, whether it's in the White House or in the Hall of Justice here in San Francisco, that fundamental change has to start with fundamentally changing the people and the ideas that we elect to these critical offices. That's why I'm running. That's why I'm proud to have PDA San Francisco support. That's why I'm proud to have the Bernie Crafts in San Francisco support and so many other leaders in the community who are going to work with me and you to end mass incarceration. Thank you so much. So we would have a truly, truly inspirational and